Welcome back. So this is the second part, how to code this assignment, My Portfolio App Web Viewer. In the previous video, we built this out. We have a navigation bar with six buttons. We have an area with your picture, the label of the class, a welcome message. We have our web viewer that we're going to use. And then we have our two, our footers, Gantech and Reagan. How the app is going to work is when they touch on home, it's going to take us to the home page. Or when they click on BTN My Apps, it's going to take them to the BT My Apps page here. And we click on My Portfolio, it's going to take us to the portfolio page here, Reflections, Substitute, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're going to code this. We also are added inside of here player and text-to-speech. So the app is going to talk. So when I type, touch home, it's going to say navigating to my home. When it clicks here is this is my apps. When I touch here, etc, etc. We're simply going to be updating this web viewer. And the web viewer, again, is nothing like Chrome or Safari. It's like putting a web browser inside of your app. So First part, before we get to messing with the web viewer, I gave you a player. Why did I give you a player? This is your app, your portfolio, so I'm going to allow you to put some music inside of it. Any music that you want. Again, we're not going to sell this. There is copyright issues. You can't go give this app and say you're going to make money on it because the music you make is not, you did not create that. So the original author of that has copyright protection on that. But for this app, just for this class, for educational purposes, I'm going to allow you to put um, some music inside of here. Remember, App Inventor has a 10 megabyte limit. So you can't put something that's 12 megabytes. It's not going to make your app work. So I already have some music. You can see I have this song that I kind of got, right? And you can see MP3s or M MP3s or M MP4s are really, really big. You can see this is 6.8. But because I'm not doing anything else in here, it's okay for this instance. So I'm going to use this. This is the app I'm going to put for my music. So this music is going to play in the background whenever my app opens. All right, so for my player, you can see the properties here. I want to loop it because it's going to play forever. Play only in the foreground. I'm also going to make the volume a little bit less. And then I need my source. I'm going to upload my file. It should be an MP3 file. Now well, that song is in music. Sitting all 18, and it was this one. And you can see I can do this one as well, MP3. You can see the duration, but you got to make sure the file size is not that big. Again, that's why in the previous assignment we did Animal, the soundboard, we use WAV files because WAV files are very small. MP3, MP4 files are very, very big. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. I can do 100 degrees. I can do anything. This one is a little bit smaller, so I'll, I'll do this one, 100 degrees. I'll do that one. That one, just so you can hear what it sounds like, is this. Turn it up a little bit. So you can see that's the music I got. I'm going to put for my app. Again, you can choose whatever you want. Make sure the file size is under 6.8 megabytes. We could not publish this. Um, actually, it says because the file size is too big. 
So there is still some restrictions. So I got to find something that's a little bit smaller. Um, probably three to five megabytes. If you can't find anything, again, you can always use WaveSource um, and upload your sound file there. Now, we're going to work with our web viewer. For the web viewer, we're going to simply put, click on it, and if you look at the properties, it has a height and width. It's going to automatically fill up the rest of the screen. It's a home URL. Ignore SSL errors. Prompt for permission. Use this location. In our instance, for the web viewer, we're not, we don't care where they're at. We're not saying if you're near here, we want to show you something different. We're simply going to show them our home page. So the home URL is actually this URL. I'm going to copy that, click in here, and paste my home URL. What that does is when the screen loads, this area is going to show my home page. It's as easy as it is to program the web viewer. Now the, the remaining factor we have to do is our text-to-speech. So anytime someone touches this button, it's going to say home and it's going to load the home page. It touches this button, it's going to go to my apps, it's going to talk. If it touches the welcome message, we're actually going to read this first paragraph, your introduction paragraph, and your interest paragraph to the user. So if they touch that, it's going to read that to them. If you touch on this, it's going to say welcome to Jamie Gantz app and game design portfolio. And these will go to Gantech. This will go to the Reagan Doral website. Let's do the easiest first. The easiest is when they touch on this guy, it's going to say welcome to my game app and game design portfolio. Simply going to need the button and text-to-speech. So let's go into blocks. When they touch BTN Selfie, so I'm going to click on that. Remember the brown blocks or your events. So I have the event click, got focus, long click, lost focus, touch down, touch up. These are the events I have for buttons. This means if I mouse over it, when someone touches that, B, that button, BTN Selfie, which is an image of myself, I want that. When someone touches it, I want to speak to the user. So I'm going to come down, and I see my text-to-speech here. Text-to-speech also has two brown blocks. After speaking, you can program some stuff. Before speaking, you can program some stuff. It also has a purple block, which is procedures or actions that you can do. And it has the green blocks, which are your properties. Remember, all the properties, if I come back here in the front, if I click on text-to-speech, you can see these are the properties. All these can be accessed through my green blocks here. These are exactly the same green blocks that you saw in the front. So I want to simply speak. And the message I want to speak is welcome to my app and game design portfolio. I have to give it a message. Well, this says text-to-speech. So if I was looking around and know what fits inside of here, I look around, here it says text, well here it says text. So I can, good area to look at, and I want to grab this first text box, which is the empty text box. We used this in the previous app. So here I'm going to type what I wanted to say, welcome to my app and game design portfolio. Welcome. Let's change it to welcome to Jamie Gantz game design portfolio. So anytime someone touches this, it's going to come here. It's going to simply say that. Very simple. The welcome message, let's do that. We want it to speak. So, in order to make it speak, we're going to let it read these two. So, I'm going to copy this and come back into App and Renner. Let's program this button. This button right here, I did not rename. I should have renamed. It was BTN welcome message. 
so that way when I come to coding, I know it's this one. I'm going to do the same thing, one click. If someone touches it, I want to call text-to-speech. I'm also going to put my text inside of there. And I'm going to paste that in. And you can see it pasted it all the way, all that text in there. My name's Game again, da 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 da. Even though it's really long, I can collapse these by going like this to make the, the block smaller. You can collapse any block. So, super easy. We program this, we program this. The rest of the app has to deal with updating the web viewer. When they touch this guy, this should change to Gantech.com. When they touch this, this should change to Reagan. When they touch this, this should show your home page. When we touch this. So, last part we're going to deal with all of these. When I click any of these, it's going to update this web viewer. When I click any of these, it's going to update this web viewer. Really, really simple to do. So, I'm going to do the bottom two. And I'll do the home page. And this one. I'm going to leave the rest of the video for you to fix these. So let's do Gantech first. When someone clicks this button, it should show the Gantech web page. So in order to do that, let's go to blocks. This button is BT and Gantech. That's why we renamed it. So I'm inside of my blocks. I'm going to scroll down. This is my BT and Gantech. I'll pull this out. And I want to change the web viewer. So I want to change the web viewer component. That means I need to go ahead to the web viewer here. And you can see the web viewer has a bunch of actions. Actions or procedures. You can see go back and go forward, clear cache, clear locations, go back, go forward, go home, go to URL. Then it has all your properties. Remember, your properties are your green blocks. Your purple blocks are your actions. It does not have any events. So what we're trying to do, when someone touches Gantech, we want to go to the website, Gantech. So I need Gantech.com. I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to type it over. I'm going to go to my web viewer. I want to update it. I want to go to a page. So you can see here is go to URL. And underneath text. I'm going to pull this inside of here. I'm going to simply have to type it in Gantech.com. So with this, when someone, that's as easy as it is to update or put a web browser or a website inside of your app. When someone touches this, it's going to update this web viewer to go to Gantech.com. So you can see that there. I'll do Reagan, home, my apps. I'm going to leave the rest to you. So. I want to do Reagan. When someone touches Reagan Doral, I'm going to update my web viewer to go. I'm going to have to put a text box in there to the Reagan Doral website. If you don't know the Reagan Doral website, I have it already saved, but I can do a Google search for Ronald Reagan Doral Sr. You can see it's the first link. And it's reagandoral.dayschools.net. But I'm going to pull it up. That way I can copy it directly in. It's taking a while to load. I'll just. The internet is slow. But this is the website. While it loads, I'm going to come back over here and paste this in. So really simple to do. This is to go to Gantech. This is to go to Reagan Doral. The last parts of that though, we updated this. But remember we have text-to-speech. So when they touch Gantech, we're going to say Gantech.com. When we touch Reagan, we're going to say Ronald Reagan Doral website. So I'm going to come here. We, that's going to the web part. I actually want to speak. So I'm going to go back to text to speech. Pull my speech in. I can put it above or below. I'm going to move this up some. I'm going to put a text box inside of there. And 
it's going to say Gantech loading Gantech.com. Come down text to speech again. I want to speak whenever they touch a button inside of here. I'm going to say loading Ronald Reagan Doral Senior High website. Really, really simple to create your portfolio app. I'm going to leave it to you. I've showed you how to do this, this, and these. I'm going to let you do the rest of these. I will show you how to do home. Home is a little bit different. This web viewer, the home URL, is your portfolio page. So home, we're going to do a little bit different. We don't have to copy the address in like we did here. So BTN home, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to go back to my viewer. You can see I could use go to home and copy in this address, but the home was already set to that. So there's a button a block here that I can use call go home. So home is simply this one. I don't have to type the address in because I already typed the address in over here. This is my home. So home is a little bit different and I obviously need to add in my text to speech. Loading my portfolio home page. So, really, really simple. The rest of these guys, you have to create. I'm going to give you the, the text that you're going to need for them, though. So, for BTMI apps, text-to-speech part, I'm going to say the same thing. Loading my apps touch the grading term below to view my assignments. So I'm going to do the same thing for all these. Obviously, you need to update it to go to the actual website. So when you click on this, it's going to say loading my apps, touch the grading term below. The reason you're doing that is over here, when I click on my apps, this is the page. You could see it has four grading terms. So they still need to touch this, and when they do, it gets us to our page. So this is the link for my apps. But you're telling them, touch the grading term below, which they will in your browser. Same thing for my projects, same thing for reflections, and substitute. For my files, it simply can say loading my files. So I've shown you the skills you need in order to complete the coding of this app. You need to code the rest of these. When you're done, I want you to test and install it. You can test it using live coding, doing AI Companion, I also want you to install it on your device. So to install it on your device, I'm going to go to build, provide QR code. You're going to select the first one again. What that's going to do is go through your app, make sure there's no errors in it. And if there's no errors, it's going to provide a QR code that you can scan. So mine is loading now. You see I have the MI2 App Inventor Companion. And I'm going to scan this. You can see it here. You can see it's trying to install, right? I push install. It's installing Jamie Gant's portfolio. And when it's done, I'm going to show you that it actually works. So my app is installed. I click on Open.
loading my portfolio homepage. And you can see it's loading and you can see my portfolio page is there. You can also click on Gantech. Loadinggantech.com. And you can see it actually goes to Gantech. Loading Ronald Reagan, Durrell Sr. Hi website. So make sure you finish the app and you test it by installing it on your phone. You can see here is the Ronald Reagan Durrell Sr. page. Click again. Loadinggantech.com. Loading Gantech. It's actually loading Gantech. Go ahead and complete the app and make sure you turn everything in. You can see on the on my app, Gantech is actually loaded on my personal app. Also, if I close this and I scroll through, you can see my gallery. It says Jamie Gant's portfolio. When I click on it, it actually loads my portfolio page. So good luck. Make sure you complete your app. You have to finish these on your own. Turn it into your portfolio. Remember, follow the rules on the page. I give you the example app. This is a rubric. Make sure you check that out. This is the example portfolio page that you need to have. These are the steps to create the portfolio page. And at the bottom, I give you the video again of how to turn your portfolio page in. If you don't create your portfolio page, I cannot grade it because it's an App Inventor. I can't check App Inventor. So make sure you turn in everything at the very bottom. And good luck. If you have any questions in class, make sure to ask me while you're working on it.